I will talk about six different ways to improve your marketing plan for a cow-calf operation. Um, so uh, when you're thinking about selling your calves or cold cows or something like that, it's sometimes hard to know what a good price is. And a lot of times we, we have in our head a, a target or a goal that we would like to receive, but how do we determine what an actual good price is? That's one of the hardest things to start with or the first things you need to start with. And I'm gonna spend probably half of my presentation time today talking about determining what a good price is. But if we don't actually do the math, calculate our own cost of production, then a good price is based on something like what our neighbors got or said they got at the coffee shop or the gas station, even though they may or may not be telling the truth. Um, or it might be based on something different, like what price we received last year. Uh, and whether or not we felt like that was profitable. The real, the real price, the real way we should figure this is by calculating what our break-even costs are. So this would be two, two different ways, I guess, calculating what your cost of production is above your operating costs, which I'll talk about more, or your break-even above total costs. Um, so this chart here comes from, this table comes from cattle facts. Cattlefax does an annual survey every year of cow-calf producers to determine what their cost of production are. Um, and the, the, the black line, the average line in the middle there between the green and the red is the average cow-calf producer for all the people that take this survey for Cattlefax, which is, covers all of the United States. Um, and if, in that first column, or actually that second column, you can see that the average cash cow cost per cow is about $600 roughly. And these are not costs like depreciation and maybe don't include labor costs either because those are non-cash costs. The third column over shows the total cow cost but adds in a return to management, that's paying yourself for your time, and then depreciation on machinery and equipment, facilities and your cows and things like that. That increases the per cow cost to $800 per head on average. Um, you can see there's a big difference between the low cost producer in green and the high cost producer in red. $725 to about $925, about a $200 difference. Um, this is why paying close attention to your cost of production is probably the most important thing you can do. And then in the last column on the right, you can see the cow calf break, or the calf break even prices. In order to break even as a high cost producer, you're gonna need $1.60 to $1.80, depending on the size of your calves, in order to break even. Uh, and that's, as we know, not attainable every year. It's not even an option a lot of years. So I'm gonna keep moving on with some more charts that kind of illustrate the same point. You can ignore the blue line, that's the cattle inventory line on this chart, but we're gonna look at the gray and the red bars. The uh, Estimated cow-calf returns, this, is, uh, this comes from the LMIC, the Livestock Marketing Information Center. They have estimated cow-calf returns from 1991 to, to about 2020, I guess, in this chart. And you can see that if you averaged all those numbers, those bars, you'd have an average return of about $50 per cow profit per year. And if you think about it, that's a lot of work for $50 per cow, but that's average. In 2019, it was negative. In 2020, they were projecting about $25 profit. That may or may not happen. This was done way before the COVID thing hit. If you look back in 2014 and 2015, we had a $500 profit per cow and a $300 profit per cow. Those times were the good old days. We may not ever see those again. We probably all should have framed those checks from selling calves in those years because that might not happen in, again in our lifetime. Um, but it illustrates the point that the margins are very thin for the average cow calf producer. This chart also comes from LMIC. They do an estimate of cow calf costs of production. And in 2020, the estimated cost that they had for their um, cow calf operation is about $825. Uh, this 
so there's my point, I guess, with those three charts, tables and charts. I wanted to prove that the average producer has a cost of production probably around $800, um, or maybe even $900 in certain parts of Idaho where you feed hay for a longer period than others. Now, this is a quote from Socrates. He said, to know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. And I kind of tweak this to make it my own. And I'm going to say, to know thy cost of production is the beginning of a marketing plan. Someday they'll have a statue of me on campus with my chin in my hand um, and I'll be famous. But this is kind of my strategy. If you don't know what your break even cost is, it, developing a good marketing plan where you can leave emotion out is next to impossible. So I'm gonna spend, uh, well, I guess I should say I have six points that I'm gonna talk about on ways to improve marketing plan. And I'm gonna spend at least half of my time on point number one which is knowing your cost of production. It's by far the most important thing you could do. Um, I work with farmers and ranchers all over the state, um, some real big ones and some real small ones, and I'll bet you less than 5% know what their cost of production was last year, whether it's crops or cattle. They just don't spend the time to crunch the numbers. Um, and it's not a lot of fun to do that when prices aren't that good. So, uh, but I'm gonna show some ways that make it a little bit easier. Um, and then if you know what your cost of production is, you can develop a much, much better marketing plan. All right, so you have to ask the, your question, the question to yourself, are, are you a high cost producer or a low cost producer? We all like to think of ourselves as low cost producers, but we maybe don't know that. Maybe we're telling ourselves that. Um, so we have to use some tools, we, or we can use some tools to calculate our costs. The university, Ashley and I, together, we put uh, together a whole bunch of cost and returns estimates for all different classes of livestock and different crops. Here are a few of our uh, cow-calf budgets. We have them for different parts of the state, different pasture and range conditions. Um, and the one I'm going to look at for the example today comes from cent Central Idaho for a 300 head operation where they're summered on private and federal range and, and fed hay for part of the winter. Um, we have eight cow-calf budgets, I believe. And then um, we also have stalker budgets uh, and feedlot budgets and a whole bunch of crop budgets. If you're a hay producer, you can look up our hay costs and returns estimates as well. Okay, so I'm gonna break down this simple uh, cost of return or cost and returns estimate for cow-calf operation, the one on central, in central Idaho. And um, I'm gonna break it out piece by piece. This is what it looks like on the spreadsheet for the first section that we use. Um, you can see that we have the gross returns for different classes of livestock, steers, heifers, cow cows, bulls, cow bulls, and color replacement heifers. The, the weights, um, and then how many head we sell, and then our estimated price. I should point out that these are estimates. These are not uh, survey results. We don't survey a whole bunch of ranchers and come up with what the average producer in this area, uh, what their costs are. These are estimates of what it looks like uh, the average producer spends or receives for their income. And we uh, do run these by producers and get feedback every time we update them. You can see here in the total value, this 300 cow calf operation has a gross returns of 235, almost $236,000. That comes up to about $786 per head uh, per mother cow. So uh, if you look at those costs of production that we just talked about, if our uh, average, if we're just an average producer and our cost of production is $825 per cow, uh, that's not a good thing. We're already 50 bucks in the hole before we even get started. Um, and I, I think I, I wanted to point this out. That I don't know that a lot of people realize it, but selling coals, um, coal cows and bulls, is usually about 20% of our gross returns. So spending a little bit more time to market them and get a premium price for our coal animals might actually pay off quite a bit, maybe even as much as uh, marketing your calves. 
Uh, so the next section is what we call the operating costs. Sometimes people call them direct costs or variable costs. These are the costs that we incur uh, when we feed livestock, when we sell them, um, it's the machinery, fuel and oil and repairs on machinery and equipment and facilities. Um, and you can add all those costs up and we spend about $200,000 on these costs. And you can see there's hay and pasture and salt and sales commissions and trucking. Um, about $200,000 for this 300 cow outfit. Uh, and that comes up to about $660 per mother cow. We, we set these spreadsheets up. This is just an Excel spreadsheet. You can change all these if you decide to use ours and I'll show you the website where you can download these. Plug your own costs in so you can come up with your own cost of production pretty quickly. And the last section is what we call our ownership costs or sometimes people call them fixed costs. Um, I don't like calling them fixed costs because that implies that we can't change them and we sure, we sure can. It's one of the secrets to increasing profitability is changing your fixed costs. Um, but that includes things like capital recovery, which is just depreciation and interest on things like purchased livestock, which would be bulls, um, housing and improvements, machinery and equipment depreciation, trucks and vehicles, uh, as well as interest on your retained livestock. Sometimes people don't understand what this is, but you know that cow herd of ours is worth about five hundred thousand dollars on the just on the market. And if we decided we didn't want to invest our money in those cows, we should be able to return, get a rate of return off of those. And even at four percent, which is the number we use in this budget here, that's about twenty thousand dollars. That's an opportunity cost that we choose to pay in order to stay in the cow calf business. We wanted to invest in stock market. We could pull that out and expect to return at least twenty twenty one thousand dollars at four percent. So there's your cost of production. We add all those up, and we can come up with our total operating cost again of six hundred and sixty dollars. Add in your ownership cost of another hundred and sixty, and in this enterprise budget for Central Idaho, our estimated total costs are eight hundred and twenty two dollars per mother cow. So um, break that down in our net returns above operating costs for this ranch um, is $37,670,000 or, $37, or $125 per mother cow. Once we subtract those fixed costs or those operating costs, we get a net returns of minus $10,600. And this is where I wish I had people to talk to, but um, it, it, and those are sometimes uh, costs that we don't consider cash costs, so we don't actually have to pay them. Um, but still, that's not a good number. Um, it's a negative number. So the question is, how much do you need to expand in order to double your profit? Go back a slide. Well, why in the world would we want to double our profit when it's negative? Why would we want to add 300 more cows and double the size of our herd to basically go in the hole another $10,000? Um, or if we just look at this number, and maybe that's the number we should look at. This is the net returns above operating costs. In other words, it's called the gross margin. The most important number for any rancher or farmer to know, I think, is $125. What if we say to ourselves, that is not good enough for us and we want to double it. We want to make uh, $250 per mother cow, a gross margin rather than 125. That'll give us the money we need to contribute to our fixed costs and we'll get this back in black where it should be instead of a red negative number. Well, so how much we need to, uh, expand in order to double our, our profit? That might not be the right question to ask. If we double net profit, that's not the right question to ask because that's the wrong thing to do. And then expanding or doubling the size of our herd is sometimes, almost all the time, uh, not possible. We just don't have the land or the feed or the capital to expand like that. But there's other ways and better ways to double our profit. So, and I think that one of the main ways, of course, is you knew I was going to say it, is to cut your operating costs. 
Um, so we're going to have to cut those operating costs and get our gross margin from 125 bucks up to $250. And to do that, all we have to do is lower our operating cost by 19%. We might not be able to do it all in one year, but we can sure cut probably 10% of our operating costs in one year if we start to change things and um, manage things a little bit tighter. When it comes to cutting costs though, it's important um, not to cut corners. Sometimes it's tempting to cut the corners that will save us big bucks in the short term, but cost us big bucks in the long term. So we need to look at the entire system, our whole management strategy and find ways to improve efficiency without sacrificing productivity. Um, and, and we need to understand too that there's a difference between maximizing productivity and maximizing profit. A lot of times I hear guys bragging about weaning 750 pound calves. And you know that they're not making money, most likely. It's probably costing them way, way more money than that extra 100 pounds of calf is worth or 200 pounds of calf is worth to get the right to brag about a heavy calf. So understand that maximizing productivity is not the same as maximizing profitability. When we're talking about calf weights, we want to talk about maximizing pounds per acre. That, that is true. That's the right way to look at it. Pounds of beef produced per acre. And then cutting costs, if we're able to do it, uh, it'll help us, number one, survive down markets, but it'll also, more importantly, position us for making mo more money in the future when prices turn around. Um, and I did mention that. So don't save money in the short run to have negative impacts in the long run. I'd start with the biggest. This is my strategy. Uh, droop all the feed costs and start start with those, cut those. And they're, you know, that's $77,000 per, this ranch of $258 per cow. And there's a whole bunch of things you can do to cut feed costs. Sometimes people act like there's nothing they can change, but there's always a better way. Um, and then the next highest category is labor costs. And I know these are maybe not labor costs that you actually pay. They might be labor costs that are, um, well, your labor might be free or your kid's labor might be free. You might not actually write a check out to yourself, but those are actual costs that are opportunity costs if we don't pay for them. Um, $217 per cow. Find ways to be more efficient there. And then the last one is fuel and repairs. And there's a lot of things we can do. We can drive a car instead of our gas guzzling pickup or diesel guzzling pickup. Uh, buy fuel in January instead of in the expensive time of the year during haying season. 10% cost savings in just those three categories alone would add about $15,000 to your bottom line. That alone would get us in the black instead of that $10,000 negative. Or about $52 per cow. If you remember that LMIC chart that had the gray and the red bars? That would put us on the top end. If we could add $50, we'd be way above those, those bars. How much do we need to increase our calf prices in order to double profit? So if say, well, we've cut cost 10%. Now, how much do we need to cut uh, or increase our selling prices in order to double our profit? Well, you need to go from 165 to $2 on your steer calves and 160 to 190 on your heifer calves in order to double profit alone with just increased prices. And that might not be possible. You might be able to increase it a little bit, but maybe not uh, two to two bucks. It's certainly not this year. Uh, that's a 21% higher price. Chances are we could get a five or 10% higher price fairly easily with a little bit of extra effort and marketing. Uh, but 21% is probably not totally doable. But a combination of the two, increasing our selling price, cutting our costs will get us where we need to go. So there's five takeaway rules that I have for the number one step in, in, in improving your marketing plan. Number one, average producers don't make money. You just can't afford to be an average producer. Expansion might not be the best way to improve profitability. And for sure, don't even think about improving your, or expanding until you have a good, positive, solid gross margin. I, I have some people that I know who's they always say, we just got to add more cows. We just got to get more cows. We got to have more land. 
that's their solution to increasing profitability. Yet every year they lose a hundred thousand bucks or more. And it, they'll never, no matter how big they get, they'll never stop losing money until they get a positive black gross margin. Um, cutting costs by 10 to 15% could easily double our profits. Um, and improving your selling price by 10 to 20% could easily double your profits. I would recommend it cutting costs by five to 10 and increasing your selling price by five to 10. And the combination of the two will probably do what you need. The best managers though have low costs and good marketing skills. Okay, so that's number one. I know that was long-winded, but that's my favorite one. So I talk about it the most. The second strategy is to improve your timing. Uh, this quote comes from Danny Kleinfelter. He's kind of my hero in extension. Uh, I like the way he thinks. He's retired now, but he said the main difference between the top 10% and the rest of the top 25% is their timing. Talking about good managers. They do everything the same, except they have better timing. And this is an example here. This is the feeder cattle chart for August feeder cattle from the futures market just yesterday. You can see that the 12 month high for feeder cattle prices was 156. The 12 month low happened right after the coronavirus thing uh, at 110. That's a $46 price swing, about 40 something percent price swing. Uh, knowing when to pull the trigger and sell your calves will easily make up five or ten percent of your net profit especially on a year like this when there's so much dang volatility um here's a quote first on the, the right wayne gretzky once asked was asked by a reporter what he thought about what he thought accounted for his success he said he recognized that it wasn't he wasn't bigger stronger or faster than most of the people he played against Gretzky believed that what made him, what made the biggest difference was the most players were always going where the puck was while he was trying to go where it was going to be. So that's thinking ahead and planning where the market's going to go. If you look at the chart from Cattlefax on the left, you can see that on this uh, blue line is the 2019 price. The black line is the 2020 price, corresponds with this axis on the left. Um, there's about a 30 cent price difference between the highs in the spring and the lows in the fall. When do we usually sell our calves? In the fall. When would we love to sell our calves? In the spring. And this uh, red line shows the index, a seasonal price index over 10 years. It's pretty well proven that prices suck in the fall and they're awesome in the spring. If we could figure out a way to do that, we'd be a lot more profitable. Take advantage of that. Um, the, third, the third strategy is to leave emotion out. And those emotions I'm going to talk about are fear and greed. What's so bad about a little bit of fear and greed? Well, they mess up our timing. It goes back to my number two. Um, fear, they say, blinds us to opportunity and greed blinds us to danger. I know every time I sell my calves, I get sick inside. Uh, the emotion just makes me, makes me feel sick physically sick it having a solid marketing plan will take almost all of that emotion out and leave the fear and the greed out too it'll keep us from hanging on to those calves hoping that the prices go higher when they're already two bucks and it'll keep us from panicking as the prices start to go down and panic selling at the bottom of the market um, so prices right now for feeder cattle are at 132 looking at this chart from yesterday, and what are we thinking? Do we have a gut feeling that says, yeah, prices are going higher, or no, no, prices are crashing. Uh, and right now, there's a lot of uncertainty. Everywhere I go, I hear people saying how horrible the prices are, how unprofitable it looks like they're going to be, and that fear and emotion, or fear and greed emotions are pretty stressful on people. Number four is to learn some simple, very, very simple charting techniques. To do this, you have to kind of keep an eye on the futures market. I'm not saying you need to check it every single day, but you should check it every couple of days probably. But learn how to spot trends and reversals of trends. This will also help take some of the emotion out. And here's some examples just from that same feeder cattle chart uh, that I showed earlier, the August chart. This is an example of an inclining trend. Uh, you just clip the bottoms of the couple of different points and you can see 
where the trend is going. And the, the thing to watch for is when the prices go below the trend line, not just for a day or an hour, but when they go below the trend line for a couple of days in a row, that's probably a signal that the trend is, is, is going to change directions. So why sell your calves when prices are going up along here? Why panic and sell them when they're going up? Why not wait until they get up here and they turn around and then sell? You're not gonna hit the top of the market, but you're sure not gonna hit the bottom of the market. Same with a declining trend. Uh, you clip up the tops of the points, and when the price goes on the opposite side of that red line, that's signaling a reversal of the trend. They're just good things to watch. You don't need to be a hedger or anything like that to take advantage of this. You can still sell in the cash market at your local auction barn and take advantage of, of, the, of these things. And then I'd, I'd watch for support and resistance levels too. This is a support level. It shows kind of the floor, I guess, that the prices kind of come down and they whack and they whack it again and they don't fall below it. Up here, it's whacked this support at 126 several times. If it falls below that support level though, that's a red flag. That's telling you, hey, these things could go quite a bit farther. So if this price up here at 132 does end up going below 126, then I'd get worried. Uh, but until then, I wouldn't panic. Same with resistance. Um, resistance levels are like the ceiling. The price comes up here and hits it, and comes up here and hits it, and hits it again and never goes above it. Uh, but someday it will, and when it does go above it, it will probably go quite a ways above it. Just things to watch for. Here's some charting cheat sheets you can get. You can download them from trackandtrade.com. They have a great little tool. The fifth one is understanding basis. Basis is simply the difference between your cash price at your local market, whether you sell in the video or to the buyer down the street or to the sell barn, and the futures contract price. And the reason it's important to understand this is because there are a lot of people, they just say, well, it's, the basis is just calculated. It's basically the transportation cost between where we're at and where these calves are gonna go, say Nebraska. Well, it's not just that. Um, the important thing to understand is that it's also the local demand. In my area, which is Bear Lake, we're at 6,000 feet. Uh, we get a ton of snow in the winter. Nobody wants to feed a calf here through the winter. It's insane. Um, it's expensive. And so there's no demand, like zero demand for calves in the winter in Bear Lake. Um, so bad time to sell, right? The basis is super weak. The difference between our price here in Bear Lake versus the futures market is super weak. But in the springtime, when we have the best grass in the state and a lot of it, there is a huge demand for calves. So, you know, take advantage of that. Understand what the difference is between the futures market and your local price and why it is the way it is. It will help you make more profit. And the last one I have is, I'm getting long-winded here, is to profit from the cattle cycle. Uh, the cattle cycle is one of the most dependable cycles on earth. And it really is. Uh, I remember a few years back when we had that drought in the southwestern part of the states uh, of the United States, they said, oh, the cattle cycle is broken. And, it, and that's what all the articles in the magazine said. It, it wasn't broken. It came right back and it's just performing like it always has done. We just had a glitch because of a major drought. COVID-19, similar to a major drought. It'll create a glitch, but the cycle will just continue on. And the reason it works is because it takes about seven years uh, for most people to get over a good uh, economic spanking. So that, that's a quote from Alan Nation. He writes some pretty good books about uh, marketing cattle. Um, and it has more to do with probably human nature than with cows. We always say, well, it's about 10 years because it takes so long to get cattle reproducing and add them to the herd and expand, but it, we can expand fast if we have the ability or the, the wherewithal, but we don't always because of that psychologically, uh, psychological spanking we got. I'll let you look at that chart. Uh, you can pause it when you review this later. I'm gonna have to move on. Um, Average cost producers, high cost producers, and low cost producers have different levels at which they can be profitable during the cattle cycle. 
This is why cost of production is so important. The cycle is predictable. You can manage your cost of production. Um, the high cost producers can only take advantage of this little peak on the cattle cycle, where a low cost producer gets to be profitable on the, you know, a huge majority of the cycle, and maybe even all of the cycle. Um, but they're going to be very profitable on the majority of the cycle. I'm going to skip this part. Uh, the problem with the cattle cycle is that when the dog piling starts, everybody jumps in the cow business. Everybody who has five acres and everybody who uh, has a little bit of cash jumps in. Uh, and the best thing to do would be to do the opposite. Because overvalued investments can stay overvalued for a long time. And once everybody gets in, who wants in, the price increases and stalls, then the market will start to search for its true value. This is a quote that I can't remember who said it, but uh, the only men to get rich in the gold rush were the ones selling picks and shovels. And that's the mentality we should have to profit from the cattle cycle. We should be willing to sell our cows, which are the cows and the calves. Um, to those miners, the people who are following the gold rush, let's let them have them and take advantage of that. And Ralph uh, Maynard Kane says, the market can, John Maynard Kane, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. And that's another reason. So the six ways to improve your marketing plan. Number one, most important, everything else depends on it is to know what your cost of production is and to actually sit down and crunch the numbers for your own business. Uh, you can go to our website and pull up a spreadsheet and then plug your own numbers in and it's an easy thing to do. It's not a pleasant thing to do, uh, but it's probably the most important thing you can do. And then spend time to figure out ways to improve your timing. And that goes for selling calves and purchasing inputs as well. Having better timing on those. Um, leave emotion out of it, the fear and greed. Learn a few different charting techniques and watch for those trends. It's amazing to me how many people just don't understand which direction the market is even heading. Um, and then understand how basis affects your price locally and take advantage of the cattle cycle. And don't fall into the same trap that everybody else falls into. When, when they're spending money, uh, sell it to them sell your calves or your cows to them.